And in my opinion, that's a great example of a cloud skill that's able to replace an MCB server. Cloud skills have been out for a few weeks and I've been using and testing them in a bunch of different scenarios within cloud code and in cloud desktop. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you what I think you should know about skills, the difference between cloud skills, cloud projects, custom instructions, slash commands, sub agents, MCPs, and more. I'm gonna tell you about how to find them, how to test them, and how to install them. I'm also gonna tell you how to build them, which by the way, isn't just a one-shot build and you're done. I often iterate on them and it's really easy. And the truth about skills is that it's pretty awesome. But like most things in AI, they're a bit overhyped. You've gotta know when to use them, how to use them, and when to use other tools. And keep in mind the biggest caveat about skills right now is that they're only available in cloud code or cloud desktop. And technically they can be used by other platforms, but unlike MCP, they're currently only being adopted by Anthropic. But they're really easy and they're much easier to integrate than MCP servers. And so even if you're not using cloud code or cloud desktop, desktop, I think it's still worth learning about them because I'm pretty sure they're coming to other platforms soon. So first things first, let's quickly clear the air. What's the difference between skills, custom instructions, cloud projects, slash commands, sub agents, the agent SDK, and MCP servers? Custom instructions or system instructions are essentially a custom prompt that you as a user could put in the beginning of any chat. For example, we're in Google AI Studio right now, they call it system instructions. And essentially I could put in a system instruction that will preempt any prompt so that Google knows how to interact with me. And you could add custom instructions in custom GPTs, in cursor, in cloud projects. Cloud projects and custom GPTs and chat GPT projects are all more or less the same thing. Essentially it's a folder on your respective platform where you can give it custom instructions and you could also give it specific files or a knowledge base. That way, every time you start a conversation with that cloud project, it knows to look at your custom instructions and it knows to look at your files. And that's pretty much what I've been doing for almost the last two years. But the problem with projects is they exist in their own kind of sandbox. It's not so composable. So here's an example of a cloud project that I use with an N8N MCP. I gave Claude specific instructions how to use N8N. I also dropped the documentation in here. So basically every conversation I have with this project, it's about creating N8N workflows or improving them or debugging them. And I'd only be able to get here if I went into this project. Now, the next three things I want to talk about relate to Claude code specifically. The first one is slash commands. These are essentially prompts that you could reuse within Claude when you just type slash. Now there are a bunch of built-in slash commands, but you can also create your own and put them in the commands directory. The next thing is sub agents. So if we do slash agents, we see a bunch of these sub agents. Essentially what they are, are agents that have their own custom instructions, their own tools and their own context window. So when you're working in Claude code and you want to do a task that you don't want to eat into your main agent's context, you can tell it to go use a sub agent. That sub agent will spin up, do a task, come back, they report to the main agent and it goes back into your context. Now, sub agents are very powerful when used correctly, because like I said, they save your context. But keep in mind, if you're being conscious, not only of your context, but also your usage, spinning up a sub agent, depending on what model you're using, will use up your usage limits a lot quicker as well. The last thing I want to talk about is a cloud agent SDK. Essentially what this is, is a way to replicate cloud code to create your own instance, your own version, not only for coding, but to go and do your own tasks. So to make this all make sense for YouTube, when I finish a video and I have a transcript, I have to come up with a title and a thumbnail and description. And I've gone through all these different iterations. I started with cloud projects, then I switched to sub agents. Then I made a version of the cloud agent SDK. And now I moved it to cloud skills. And basically I trained it on all of my past posts, my analytics, what I think does good, what I think doesn't do good. So now you can see my skills specifically for my YouTube descriptions, my YouTube title and thumbnails, Twitter posts, Reddit posts. This is a very powerful use case of skills because it just takes the repetitive tasks that I do over and over again and streamlines it. Lastly, MCB servers. I talk a lot about MCB servers on this channel. They're very powerful. They give your agents or your LLMs access to external tools like Playwright, like Superbase, like Context 7. There's so many MCP servers out there. I'll put a link above to my MCP playlist. Very, very powerful. They're a bit annoying to install. They're even harder to make. And the biggest problem with MCP servers are they bloat the context. When you load an MCP server into an agent, especially a coding agent, everything gets loaded in, all of the tools. So that fills up a lot of the context window. And this all comes down to context engineering. That's what makes skills so powerful because skills are essentially structured problems. And you can think of them like custom instructions with multiple layers. And what I mean by that is that the layers are not all loaded into the context at once. They use this thing called progressive disclosure, meaning that at first the top level item, the skills name and description is what's loaded into context. And if Claude or Claude code decides to use that skill, it will scan another layer below to get the necessary context it needs. So unlike MCB servers, which load up the context all at once, it only sees the name of the description and only if it needs it, it will dig deeper. So for example, if we looked at my YouTube link, LinkedIn skill, 
Claude will only look at the name, YouTube, LinkedIn post, and look at the description. Generate three to five professional LinkedIn post variations to promote YouTube videos, etc., etc. So skills are the most portable and accessible right now and can be used between Claude Code and Claude Desktop. They're extremely easy to make. They're even easier to install and you could combine them and make very powerful workflows. So before showing you how to build them, I'm going to show you how you could find them. So first of all, Anthropic gave a bunch of reference skills, just like MCP. You can see them all here. They have a dot Claude plugin. So you can easily add them to Claude code with slash plugin. I'll just show that to you right now because it's so easy. If we do slash plugins, add marketplace, and then we type in anthropics slash skills, and it will add the marketplace. Now, mine failed because I already have mine added. Now, there's plenty of other places you could find Claude skills. For example, on Claude code templates, they have a filter just for skills. If you were to click through to one, you view it on GitHub. That's what I like to do. There's a very popular Claude skill called Claude superpowers. It has 5.8 thousand stars. It's able to do a bunch of different things like test driven development, debugging, start get work trees. It's a very powerful one. Because cloud skills are so easy to make, even easier than MCP servers, everyone's making them. So you'll find a lot of them online. But when downloading skills, just like when you download MCP servers or anything else, you got to be cautious especially when it's essentially prompts that you're giving to your agents. And those agents might have access to external data sources via MCP, for example. Because if you're not careful, you could accidentally download a skill that does something harmful, like prompt injections. So you want to be careful because there might be shady or malicious prompts, especially if you have no idea who's writing these skills. And what I did is I built a skill that scans other skills, kind of like my MCP evaluator. So let's do that real quickly. So I typed in use the skill evaluator and I gave the URL of the superpowers and let's let it run. Now you don't have to do this. You can actually look at the skill itself. But for me, just like with MCPs, it saves a lot of time because I already gave it my custom instructions. It already knows what I look for. And it gives me a report and output as I want it to know, is this kosher or should I skip it? Now to be completely fair, this is not a foolproof plan, but this is more comprehensive and deep and it saves me a lot of time. Okay, so after a few minutes, it finished. So it's recommended, safe to use, overall risk score, 96 out of 100, no security threats detected, talks about how many stars it has on GitHub, usually a good sign because that means a lot of people have tested it, a lot of people are using it. There's an active community with positive feedback, it's featured on Hacker News, on Reddit, on tech blogs, and then it tells me it actually analyzed 21 different skill files, it looked at two shell scripts, it read through 30 different GitHub issues, and it actually gave me a full security assessment, and it opens up here as an artifact with much more details, not just this quick summary. So anyways, that's a skill that I made with a skill creator to check other skills. So I've built several clot skills. Here are just a few of them. My MCP evaluator skill, my PRD creator skill, my skill eval skill, which I just showed you. I built a skill to help me improve my Sora prompts, specifically for giving prompts to Sora for things I might not let you do, like copyrighted characters or famous people, and my YouTube skills, to name a few. So what you need to know about skills is they can be very simple. They're essentially just a markdown file that starts with YAML at the beginning. I just wanna show you how it looks. It's the name agent skill evaluator, and then it's description. And that's all the agent will see. And then if he chooses to use it, it will look progressively at the rest of the markdown file. And you can stop at just a skill.md, or you could give it more things like references. And references are good if you want to give it specific examples. So for example, I give it examples of attack patterns and safe skill examples. So that way it will know what to compare against when looking at other people's skills. And in the previous video I did on skills, I showed how to create skills in Claude Desktop by going to settings, capabilities, scroll down to enable skills and turn on the Claude skill creator skill. Now this video is getting a lot longer than I thought it was gonna be. So I was just gonna tell you my process for building skills. Essentially, I will talk to Claude Desktop or Claude Code. I will ask it to do something and I will give it feedback. For example, with my YouTube description skill, I told it I wanted to write me a YouTube description. I gave it the name of the video, the transcript of the video, and then I gave it a description from a past video. Then I asked it to build a skill using the skill creator skill. It worked on it, it gave me a file, I uploaded it to Claude Code. Then I tried it with a new transcript. It didn't come out how I liked it. So what I ended up doing was taking 15 descriptions of other YouTube videos. I said, try again and use these other 15 descriptions. And essentially what it did was it put all those descriptions in a resource. So now every time I create a YouTube description, it looks in the resources at all the other descriptions I have in the past. But the bottom line is just don't create a skill and say, okay, we're done. Test it out. If it doesn't work the way you want it to work, iterate on the skill. Tell it what you don't like and then say, okay, improve the skill based on our conversation. That is how I've created a bunch of cloud skills that 
I'm very happy with and I use on a regular basis. Lastly, in my previous video about cloud scales, I talked about how scales might be able to replace certain MCB servers. And I just want to give an example of that. And in a different video, I also talked about how the Playwright MCB server takes a lot of the context window. Here's the thing, Playwright and the Chrome DevTools MCB are very powerful. They essentially allow you to have your agent talk to a browser and perform actions and get feedback and look at the terminal, but you don't actually need an MCB server for that. Now this person, Lackey JB, made a Playwright skill for Cloud Code. What I ended up doing was using the skill evaluator again on the Playwright skill by Lackey JB, no relation. It came back saying score 87 out of 100. It just points out that this skill requires executing Playwright code and that's the intended purpose. So let's just go ahead and do this. First thing first, I create a new project and we're gonna add the Playwright MCP. Okay, so we imported one MCP server. So if we do slash context, we'll see that this project starts at 17% context. Now if we do slash MCP and then we disable the Playwright MCP server. So then we did slash clear and we do slash context again. We see that the context window is now at 10%. So now we're in an empty project, no code, no chat. The context window starts at 10% without any installed MCP servers. So our baseline is 10%. When we enable the Playwright MCP, it goes to 17% without any conversation. So now let's install this Playwright skill. I already showed you how to install a skill via plugins. Let's just look at installing a skill directly from GitHub. We're gonna download the source code. I already unzipped the zip file. Now to add a skill the manual way, you first create your .cloud folder. And we're just gonna take the skills directory and drag it into the .cloud folder. Now we see we have .cloud slash skills slash playwright skill. Now all we want to do is npm run setup. So if we then open up Claude, you will now see the playwright skill and it has a playwright package already downloaded. So if we say use the playwright skill to go to dodgers.com. So it asks to use the playwright skill. We say yes. And there we have it. Dodgers celebrate World Series title with parade. The Dodgers won the World Series again? Crazy. And then when I run slash context, after I went to dodgers.com, we see that the context is only at 12%. So comparing the Playwright MCP in a blank project that did no actions and there was no conversation, it started at 17%. Whereas this Playwright skill that is installed and was able to run Playwright only got to 12%. So you can see the difference. And to be completely honest, I didn't compare the features and functionality of this Playwright skill to the Playwright MCP one-to-one. -one. But in my opinion, that's a great example of a Claude skill that's able to replace an MCP server. So in any case, I hope this video was helpful. I hope you learned the difference between skills and MCPs and sub-agents and custom instructions slash commands. I hope you learned how to create skills, how to install skills, how to find them, how to evaluate them and make sure that they're safe to install. If you have any questions or feedback, drop it in the comments below. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. It really helps me grow. Thank you guys for watching and have a great day.